My earliest recollections were when I was about four years old, living with my mum, dad, my sister Sally who was six years and my brother Ian who was seven in Ferntree Gully. The family weatherboard home seemed so large, but on reflection everything did when I was a child. I shared my bedroom with my sister. My brother had his own room. I thought he was so lucky, but those years in the same room as Sally made our bond very close. Our home was surrounded with large trees and brush, a perfect place to hide when we were playing. Growing up together, we seemed to spend most of our time in the backyard. Back in the 50s, we didn't have a TV. Most people didn't. So for us, spending time outside was full of adventure. Never hard to find something to entertain us. Sunday was for family, and Mum nearly always made a roast, which was either chicken or rabbit. Our family of five required two rabbits or chickens for these meals, and my sister and I always helped Mum and Dad cook them up. We felt so important, we pretended that we were little mums and dads, always made a fuss over the food, as if we'd cooked it all ourselves and not mum. When chicken was on the menu, and as we had a chicken coop, dad would select two prime birds and lop their heads off. It may seem horrific nowadays, but back then it was the funniest sight to see. A chicken running around the yard with no head. Dad and my brother would pluck and gut the chooks and make them ready for us to cook. I went to the local primary school, as did my brother and sister, but of course they started before me. I was so jealous when I watched them walk to school each morning, and I had to stay home. I wanted so much to go with them. Very few children went to kindergarten back then. Most went straight to preps. My first day at school was an eye-opener. I'd never seen so many children arriving at school by foot or by pedalling bikes. Some were driven by their mum or dad. I still remember seeing the school monkey bars for the first time, what appeared to be three squares with horizontal bars at different heights. My brother was such a bragger, showing me how he could reach the second highest bar when I couldn't even reach the first one. It seemed so funny that by the time I was in sixth grade, I could reach the highest bar which was probably only five foot high. Primary school was wonderful. So many new and exciting things to learn and to experience. I always look forward to Monday mornings, that being the time to talk about the John Gould Society. That was all about birds and once a month the teacher gave us a free poster with the most wonderful pictures. I really didn't know who John Gould was. It didn't matter, but through his knowledge, we were taken on such adventures to all parts of the world to learn about birds. I really didn't know there were so many on this planet. Lunchtime at school was set aside for card swapping. Finding a comfortable seat outside and comparing swap cards with my friends. If one had a card that I needed to complete a set, I offered her a card that she may have needed. I must have had a hundred cards bound with a thick rubber band so I wouldn't lose them. I remember starting sixth grade, a big kid at last. By now I could reach the top level of the monkey bars and then came high school. The shock of being a little girl all over again. Those six formers were so big, some of the boys even had whiskers and the girls, well, I'm sure some wore bras just like mum. But as in primary school, I soon grew up, got just as tall as those other big kids that I'd looked up to so much, and within a blink of an eye, I was one of those big kids and a school prefect, which meant I could tell other kids what standards of behaviour were required at school. Seventeen years old, I was nearly an adult. After high school came the realisation that I needed to work. Most young adults didn't go to university then, Perhaps it was too expensive for the parents. I really don't know. But looking for a job and being interviewed by a boss at 17 was intimidating. But I did get a job, working as a sales girl at Maya in the city. Travelling by train each day from Ferntree Gully, I was so scared at first. I felt out of place, sitting or more the case standing on a packed train carriage with people of all ages travelling all the way into the city. Back then they had carriages for smokers and non-smokers. 
The smoking carriages looked like they were on fire as they passed by, smoke pouring out of the windows. It was at Meyer that I met John. He was a clerk in the lay-by section. He wore a long sleeve shirt and a tie every day. I thought he was so handsome. He was the first boy that thought I was beautiful and couldn't stop telling me. He was also the first boy to take me out on a date to the pictures and we saw Raging Bull. Why did he think I would be interested in a boxing movie? I didn't complain at the time, but I do stir him about it now from time to time. Well, John may have got that night wrong, but he was a trier, always a gentleman. But that long hair, I never thought Dad would approve. Well, John didn't put a foot wrong too many more times, so much so that when we did get married some four years later and had two wonderful girls, Jessie and Louise, who've grown up now and have given us grandchildren. To think I was 21 and John was 23, now grandparents. John retired last year after being a sales rep for a clothing company and I being a housewife, which I feel so lucky to have been. On planning his retirement, John was so worried that he wouldn't be able to occupy himself without work. But we seem closer now as we do everything together. The two girls with their husbands and their children are putting their roots in the ground, planning and experiencing their own lives. John and I spend more time together experiencing our own interests, things that we can do together. From that little girl beginning, her first day at school, to now being a grandmother, I wonder sometimes, where has the time gone? But it's taken up by the wonderful childhood and growing up in a beautiful country that has given me such a good life with a caring husband and a family.